All right. Today's gonna be a fun day. Hello, Leanne. Give us a second here. We'll go live as well. Karen and Karen, it's good to see you as well. All right. And we'll give it just a couple quick moments here before we get everything rock and rolling and go live. I'll get that process started now. And your mom is here. And we've got quite Hello, a few mom. people here. Hey, and Kim is here. Hey, Kim. We got lots of people coming in. Where's Richard Walton? <laughs> Julie. Well, well, you know, maybe you didn't see that it's a new lamp. Oh, it Richard, might be. I'm sorry if you see this afterwards. I know. He always is the first one in the door. <laughs> Stacy okay. Burns here. Awesome. Hello, Linda and Ted. Come on in, Ted. Hello, hello. Pleasure to see everybody. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today for a very special edition of Weekly Sessions with QB Community Live. We are honored to have Ted Callahan with us. Ted is going to tell you a little more about himself, of course, but he is actually uh, the new lead for the accounting division with Intuit for Intuit QuickBooks. And we wanted to help introduce them to the community and engage, open up an opportunity to engage a dialogue so we can all work together to, you know, build this relationship. As I always say, together we all succeed, right? 100%. Thank you both so much for having me. I wish I could see all of those that are joining us, but um, thanks to your personal faces, I'll just connect with you and know that it's connected with everybody else. So excited to hear the questions. I know you've been submitting polls and get to know what's on the hearts and minds from all of you. Hello, Sarah. <laughs> all right. So hey, give me one second here and we will, I'm going to make sure that the event has been shared out to everybody else as well. Linda, have you seen that part of it? Uh, oh, good. We're yeah, alive. Nice and beautiful. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Ted, we really appreciate you taking the time to come out here because I know you have a busy life and a busy job. So we really appreciate you coming and answering the questions. And we can talk a little bit about the polls, but we're really happy that you came and that you're open to feedback. I love that we did the listening tour with you. And that really mm -hmm. made my heart sing. It was just awesome that you reached out and wanted to know what we think. And now we're letting the group, it's really, this is about the group today. So let's, uh, I guess we can kind of dive in. Um, you know, I love the way that you actually brought that up. Real quick context. The way the three of us met was because Ted actually had reached out doing, and please, I'll ask you to kind of explain it more, but you were doing a listening tour. Mm -hmm. um, what was it about, Ted? Sure. Uh, so when I, I, I've been it into it a little over three and a half years in a variety of different teams. And when I joined the accountant group in this new role, a key thing for me was understanding from all of you what's going on, what's on your hearts and minds, especially in a time like right now where we've got COVID happening and so much uncertainty in our world. I wanted to have a very clear read and just a, a sense of wh where are the hearts and minds of each of you. And so I started reaching out to different people at Intuit saying, where, you know, where are those voices that will give me a really great understanding across the market um, from all of you of what's going on? And so you two um, instantly were on that list. And it was just such a great conversation hearing your perspective, right, across the entire country, different industries. <laughs> and, and the spirit of it was just to understand what's going on and why, right? You can look at data all day long, but it's so much more powerful to hear the stories of accountants partnering with small businesses and making that unbelievable impact, um, especially right now. So that, that was the spirit of it, Matthew. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Real quickly, I actually was supposed to start off by sharing a couple of slides and this, that, here and there. So I'm going to do that now because we also want you to kind of tell us more about your background. Uh, let me choose the right screen like a pro here if I can. Hey, and we'll go forward. Um, so we're gonna back step for a quick second here. Hey, special guest, hi Ted, there we go. <laughs> and actually, so I, I gave you a quick introduction about who you are, but would you actually tell us a bit more about yourself as people can kind of see the slide, but tell us, tell us about your background, 
Um, tell us about who Ted is, please. Ab absolutely. I uh, grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. And I like to joke, like everybody that's born in Nashville, you're handed a guitar upon birth and expected to be able to play it. Uh, so that quickly became a passion. It was actually the movie um, Back to the Future that ignited my guitar playing uh, passion, was, was seeing that. Um, anyway, so born and raised in Nashville. Um, and then I very quickly, uh, when it came to college, wanted to get to a different part of the country. And California was calling my name. Uh, and so I could go into that, but the speed version is got out to California, fell in love, not only with um, the climate, the weather, um, and the people, but also I found um, the woman who would become my wife and um, she's from Long Beach. So good old SoCal native, close to you, Matthew. And um, yeah, have loved that. Spent eight years, I call them my exile years uh, in New England. Loved being in both Massachusetts and New Hampshire. It was a great experience. Um, met some unbelievable friends and loved that community. And then ultimately we had three kids and we said, we got to get closer to family because this is hard to do all on our own. And so we came back to California. So that's the kind of personal contour. Oh, and then the other update, we got a puppy in the midst of the pandemic. My nice. was opposed to dogs and uh, my daughter, who is our youngest of the three, I told her, this is your lifetime achievement award. You're winning it very early. Um, to convince my wife, who's fairly stubborn, uh, that we needed a dog. So nothing like the crisis to bring that about. That's so, awesome. Yeah, so that's the personal, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> did you say the puppy's name? I did not. Uh, the puppy's name is Henley. Henley, I love it. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, everybody needs a good dog, right? I'm a firm believer of that, so... You'll yeah. hear mine snoring in the background because she's a snorer. She has a little tiny nose, so she snores a lot. <laughs> yeah, cool. So, and then quickly on the on the kind of business part of the background, did a variety of tech things right out of undergrad and then um, ended up running a nonprofit because of a mentor of mine. When I went to business school, I then got into consulting and had a really wonderful experience in professional services. And so I think, again, when I've, just loved jumping into this role as the accountant leader. It's, I think we all are united in that passion for exceptional client service. And so okay. that's something, go that's ahead. Awesome. What, what is your favorite eighties cover song? Cause you said it said you were in an eighties cover band. I want to know the song. What's your favorite Ooh. song to do? Ooh, there are so many. So many, right? Yeah. There are so <laughs> many. I, certainly it would either be, you know one of the kind of obvious Bon Jovi tunes or um, I really like Sweet Child of Mine because That's a good it's, one. It's, it's actually a hard uh, song to get right. It's a ballad. And yeah. so having that balance of the sweetness and uh, the grit is, is hard to nail in terms of the guitar tone. Nice. So I so, know that there was, oh, thank you actually. Linda, please go ahead. I was gonna no, I was just gonna say, if you wanted to start with the first question because um, we wanna share the poll results with them on a, a couple of the polls we ran. Uh, so the first one is, how are most of your clients feeling right now about their business outlook? And, you know, this is such a great question to truly understand because as much as we are connected through social media, we are all still disconnected, if you will. So it's nice to know how everybody else is feeling about all of this. Um, this one made me and, happy. Happy to see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did you all see, I uh, just saw people are saying, uh, people on Facebook are saying they can't get into the Zoom. I was actually trying to do the same thing that's uh, back and forth to figure out what I can make happen here. So um, if you guys want to discuss this part of it, I'll work on that and I will be right back. Okay, perfect. So with the pessimist, I'm glad to see that like majority of people were, most of the clients, I mean, we're having those conversations right now with them when it, it's closing the last year and talking about your goals and setting and forecasting for the future. I'm so happy to see that people are like, not sitting back and kind of going, no, I want, I, my clients are shooting for the moon with some of their goals. And it makes me really happy that, you know, sometimes to rein them in a little bit and say, are you a person that wants to have the real high goal you don't get? Or, you know, how do you expect to get there? That's always a question where they, they throw a goal out and then you'll say, how do you, how do you plan on getting there? And then they get the white face. It's like, oh, I didn't think about that. I should pick a number. <laughs> 
Well, and that's such a, I feel like that's such a great reminder, Linda, of, of the power, again, I think that you all play with these small business owners, because by nature, they are risk takers, because otherwise they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. Exactly. And, and providing that grounding in, in my old, in, from my consulting days, we called it a through cycle mentality. Mm -hmm. like not going and getting extended over your skis and not also playing it back. But making those smart moves to invest and grow the business, those are the leaders that emerge and they take share in times of crisis. So true. It's so true. And, you know, when you start to lay down the path for them, that's when we we're kicking it up a notch and taking on that advisory role that I hate mm -hmm. the advisory word, but, um, you know, I, I'd rather be their partner. And it's it's a nice way to say it, that they feel more like you're part of their team. And then just discuss it with them and really talk about how are we going to get to that end game? Um, you know, what I do like in Fathom, the goal seek, because mm -hmm. it helps me to visual, put a visual picture in there in front of them. Like if we cut this back and we push the prices here, it's, that's probably my favorite piece of Fathom is that because it's really powerful because it's so visual and they can play with it. Like I'll offset what I think and I'm like, you guys, you figure it out and look at it. And then it starts the conversation and then it keeps it going. And that's the important piece for us as, as accountants to really engage them in that way. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> I remember, um, so be before I joined into it, I started a business myself that was actually partnering with startups and really helping them uncover those opportunities. And one of my mm -hmm. favorite CEOs that I used to work with always said, if you can build a financial model for your business, it will teach you things about your business that you would never understand through your MBA. Mm -hmm. and, and what you just described is exactly that, right? It's, it's the power of here's the set of inputs that if we manage, will change the outputs, right? Sometimes good and sometimes not good. Oh, totally. And then it's it, like startups is where I started with QuickBooks and working with all these small companies. And then I got really excited about startups because I got to be a part of all these different businesses. And it was really a part of my life that I was when I when I actually thought about niching, it was on the list of should I go that route? But it didn't make financial sense to go there. I mean, yes, it's exciting, but you know, half the time I started looking at those clients. I was like, oh, I kept helping this one, helping that one because I wanted them to succeed. And then helping meant like not being compensated. So it didn't make sense to be that accountant. So, you know, and I, that's what made me go down the road of the path of being with the legal industry, which I really love. So, and I would say if anybody here is listening, if you're thinking about niching, please, if you want to join the group, we'll talk about that because it's, it's been the best decision I've ever made in my career. And it's made my career more fun. And I didn't really think that was going to be the end result. And it's been a lot of fun. I'm really happy with doing it. And yes, you can get paid more. <laughs> that's the big, if that's the driver, it can be the driver, but it's fun. We got to enjoy what we do, right? Um, mm -hmm. So we were able to actually get everybody coming in now, which is awesome. Thank you so much for that. I know the other, one of the other poll questions we had that people were responding to is, people were very interested to hear about what new improvements and product, uh, basically, what was it? It's uh, upcoming product improvements for accountants. Mm -hmm. um, so what can you, you know, share with us a bit on that side of it? Because after that, I do want to make sure we leave some time open to answer Q&A with people that are joining us live and make sure that people have the chance to connect with you. Yeah, I appreciate the question. The, uh, there's, a, there's a number of areas that I am working on. And I think the first is like we started off, it's the opportunity to come listen and get to um, hear from each of you in your language, where your problems are, what are the challenges in your clients' experiences with our QuickBooks software and care experiences. I've heard a lot about improving customer support. And so actually, the, I would tell you the first priority that I have together with our payroll team is improving the customer support that you and your clients get when you're dealing with payroll issues. Um, as one accountant said to me, there, there's no such thing as an emergency in accounting except payroll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're not dealing with life or death unless it's payroll, right? Which <laughs> I actually have to agree with that. I always say there's no such thing as an accounting emergency, but actually I think there is such thing as a payroll emergency. I think there is. And we have everybody Sandy. in the comments, I'm sorry, in the comments, do you agree or not? Is there such thing as an accounting emergency? If so, yes or not. Is payroll an accounting emergency? Tell us what you guys think. I don't know. I love and we had Sandy Edwards on last week and she is so passionate about 
making customer service better to the point where people are coming to me and she's like, get their case number. I want to know who they spoke to. She's really working hard towards making that better. And I have to tell you, I've worked in lots of payroll programs. Payroll so, <laughs> that payroll support isn't good in other places either, despite what people say. I've not had that experience. So it's just an uh, across the board thing. And she's really passionate about it. And she was, we had so much fun having her on. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up. She, I actually had her join my staff. Uh, oh, on she's the, on amazing. The Mm -hmm. So that it is a durable focus and prioritized across. I mean, it's obviously internal baseball, but it just shows you the priority across the business of getting that right. So that's that's a key part of the experience. And so one, it's do that in the short term, but then use that as an opportunity to continually be raising the bar on customer support across the board for all of you, right? A key ad advantage of the ProAdvisor program is getting preferred and differentiated support and making sure we're, we're paying that off. Right? Because when I look at the qualitative data, if you look at the metrics, it looks like we're doing well. But when I dig into the qual, there's there's some pain out there and we've got to improve that for all of you. That was actually one of the questions that our, our group members had actually discussed was um, there are questions about, at least when I first got started, we had our own like personal um, representative. Like we had a, a rep for our account. Mm -hmm. um, now, albeit the rep didn't contact me very much. Maybe other people had more on that side of it, but there are a lot of people that expressed that they love that side. And they also were talking about having just the connection points to be able to get the best support possible. Yep. Um, is there anything you can share with us on what does that look like going forward? Because as accountants, that is extremely important to us, right? How, how do we connect with knowledgeable people to help us do our job faster? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, I th I've got a couple of answers for that, right? Which is, um, again, this is why I love learning from all of you, right? That's a theme that I've now hit a couple of times. I've been jumping on all of those big um, escalations as well, Linda, along with Sandy, to learn and to pull in the right people. Huh? And the, the number one thing that I learned together with our customer success team is an example where um, accountants, you, you all do not want to spend time on a phone telling a person how to do their job so that you can get to the next level up to then resolve the issue, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. so we were able to kind of put together, exactly, we're able to then put together, oh, there's actually a way we've incentivized some of our third party partners <laughs> incorrectly that's leading to a bad customer experience that we were unaware of. So it was literally the proverbial, um, you know, scales falling from the eyes moment for that customer success leader that I had joined that call and they say, oh, I know what's going on there. And so it's, it's the power to bring different people together to then get the firsthand information to then solve the problem. So that's one thing. I think the other is there's been a big push in Intuit customer success to move away from phone support. We had something like 70 plus different 1-800 numbers to be calling in. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, no. <laughs> in creating logged in experiences where you can go get help that you need so that we understand what the issue is, who's calling so that we can route you to the right person right away. That's a change, right? That's a change of behavior. That's not easy. Um, and so we're, we're in the midst of that transformation, number one. Number two, thinking about how you staff a chat support versus the phone support. Yeah. There's trade-offs there. And again, the organization is learning and making moves to improve that. Okay, so that's probably plenty on customer success. Can I pause <laughs> you real quickly side. there uh, for yeah, a quick second? Yeah. Um, in the chat, I would love to actually get you some additional feedback from everybody. Mm -hmm. The idea of the phone support, um, moving away from phone support, please in the chat, tell us, yay, nay, what do you guys <laughs> think? I'd like to actually hear feedback on that side of it, please. Um, and this is the time for your voice to be heard. So, so I love the callback thing. Uh, that is the best yes. that they call you back. Don't please yes. don't take that away because that saves me so much time. And it's usually five minutes. And I used to go to the chat. I would do the chat. I had always had good experience with the chat and I've always had because of the elite level. And I don't know how that works. If it even works anymore, I've seen people saying it doesn't, but for me, I've always had a good experience 
not so much in payroll and not so much in merchant services. But mm. what I would do is call my payroll support person and my elite person and say, stay on the phone and now transfer me, but don't leave me. And it made a difference <laughs> that they were there. Um, but I've had those. I mean, I've seen people here in the chat saying that they've had the hour. It's frustrating when you have to be on the phone for an hour to resolve something. And sometimes it's really frustrating with the payroll support where you know more than the person that's answering the call right. and that made it hard. Right, which is the specific pain point I've heard mm -hmm. consistently on the payroll mm -hmm. um, in spite of metrics looking like, oh, we're doing a great job on that. And so that's mm -hmm. again, that that, that um, contrast is is where we can kind of jump in and, and, and we're making, well, there's actually a pilot launching on Monday on, on solving that, I'm happy to solve one of the suggestions I had made when we had our conversation on your listening tour was um, that I've always thought it would be great if there's a way to take into consideration the level of certification we have. So yep. if I'm an advanced pro, you know, advanced certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor, I should be able to say that's much easier, right? Um, then please don't stick me with somebody who is like fresh with the company and not understanding. Mm -hmm. But at the yes. same time, what I also want to stress is as accountants, we need to remember there's a difference between contacting customer support and the expectation of UI UX um, uh, help versus accounting help. They're not hiring accountants and payroll professionals to answer your questions. So we shouldn't be expecting they can answer accounting related questions. Their job right. is to help us understand how to use their product, right? That's a great distinction completely agree. Um, I think the the other piece I was going to say, I think I'm, just, I'm watching in the chat, folks having good experiences with chat, not great experiences. What I would say is to me, fundamental is we need different kinds of customer support for accountants for a couple of reasons, right? First of all, you are all small business owners yourselves. You deserve great customer support, period. As we all know, resources are always scarce. So you have to segment Number two, because you are power users because of your craft, and I, I'm telling you everything you know, you then also have this portfolio where you get to see the entire you know, mix of good, bad, and neutral experiences with our products. And because of that, because of that power user, because of that exposure, we need to route you to people that also are used to that, which means higher level customer support folks, not the general base. So, so what you're saying is you don't have a nerd level for people like me? Not yet. But if you <laughs> yeah. Hey, he's being honest. honest. <laughs> I love that. I kid, I kid. No, uh, I love it. I mean, you're right. And honestly, like, I, I'm so guilty of it. I, I've always said it's, e it's really easy to forget what you had to learn, right? Which in the intent of that statement is, Mm -hmm. We've been doing this, we're focused in it, we're doing it all the time. So there's certain things that may be commonplace to us mm -hmm. that those who are just getting started, it may not be commonplace too. So it requires us to, remi to remember to have a little bit of extra patience um, so we all can work together through some of that. Yay. Stuff. Like your mother always says, you put yourself in the other person's shoes. Um, I know we have a whole bunch of other topics though, so right. you might want to go grab another one. Yeah, totally. I was, I was going to also then come back to, okay, so what are the product improvements, right? So that was about customer oh, yeah. success. Mm -hmm. I was going to come back to what are we doing, right? So within the accounting team, as you all hopefully are experiencing, and I'd love your feedback on month-end review, we've been doing a lot, a whole lot to improve your workflows on some of those core jobs that take up lots and lots of time that are not client facing at all, right? Mm -hmm. It's back office work. And so we've really been working to streamline and automate that, not just from what the workflow is, but also the feeds that come in. So things like statement auto import oh, all the way through to reconciliation and then improving the modeling that we do to identify anomalies so that you can entrust more to rules or the system can take care of it. Okay, I'd love to pick up Martha's question there, the training to customize it. That sounds interesting. Um, <laughs> And, and so we're, we really want to complete that. So that's, we've launched essentially what we would call version one, right? Now we need the feedback of, okay, what, what are the opportunities to improve it? Some of the feedback I've been hearing is it's fantastic if you're younger in the craft and you don't have as developed a workflow. If you already have your own way of working and operating, it may not be quite as helpful. Um, whereas if you're doing oversight of a team, right? Like, so I, Linda, I know you've got a team that you've got that helps you do that. Yeah, it, maybe it's, it's better as a management console kind of tool to check, have they done it right or not? 
and then the areas that aren't working, you know, what are the opportunities there to improve that? I think that's a great um, piece of QuickBooks. So one of the things I think one of the features of QuickBooks that I think is one of the most powerful is, is it, it because you have it built in. I would have loved to have been like brand new to accounting and sitting there and having that pre-built because it's whoever was involved in building that, which I think I might know one of the guys that did, it, did. they did everything the same way I did. So I, I just, it's just nice to have it in there. So you don't have, it's built right into the product. So. Mm -hmm. I, I remember in some of the early reviews of that experience, literally some of the people that, uh, some of the accounts that we've been partnering with to develop it were in tears because they were like, I can't believe yeah. like, this is finally what I want. So, yeah. so I think I want to make sure we complete the journey that we started. And this is where I love you all because you keep us so honest. <laughs> you don't get to do the thing of, we launched it, now move on to the next shiny yeah. project. It's like, no, 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 see this thing through. And so really getting clear from you of what's working, what do we need to change um, would be very powerful. I want to make sure we save this chat too. Oh yeah, you'll get it. We'll give it to you. We will. And yeah. I'll, I'll bring it to the team <laughs> because they will love hearing the feedback. And and we will with you know everybody's permission and as long as your time permits, we'll probably, normally we try to, we're going to go a little bit longer today just to make sure we can try to answer all this different stuff, but not too much longer. Um, yeah. So uh, there are some great questions that are coming in, but I wanted to make sure like we first address and talk about all the different improvements you've been discussing. And then we can really dive into some of the questions. I really like Marriott's asked an amazing one, which I think, but um, were there any other improvements? Uh, I know the, a lot of improvements, but I have signed so many NDAs. I don't know which one I'm allowed to talk about or not. So I'm going to let you talk about them. So <laughs> which ones can we talk about? Yeah. And so, so the, um, the pieces that I, and I also am like always trying to keep in mind, what can I say? What can I not say? So yeah. but I would say, if you think about our commitment to you all, which is how are we, um, it's a Silicon Valley kind of lingo of 10X, your efficiency in your core workflows, right? So there's, there's a number of, so month end review, completing the journey with bookkeeping, right? Is a big area of opportunity. The next big area of opportunity that we're really excited to dig into is really leaning into collaboration tools that will help you all Amen. work with your clients. Um, and so that's thinking at the, in terms of client communications and at the transactional level, like some of the, some of the comments are already calling out, like their individual transactions they can't see, or then they're gonna need to go back and get input from their client on. How do we enable that? So you're not doing what you all have to do today, right? Which is copy and paste, put it into an Excel file or a Google sheet, share it, have that back and forth, then bring it back into QuickBooks. We wanna get you out of the, multiple systems that you have to manage to just streamline that workflow for you. All. Amen. I mean, that has always been my biggest uh, like pain point. Um, I want to draw out, Marriott, thank you very much. Everybody, please ask your questions in the Q&A area because it makes it easier for us to actually draw attention to them and see them. And we also get a record of them, everything else. So um, I, I love that. My biggest frustration is having all these different tabs and windows open. I've always said, if you, you can trick me, you can put me into a platform or an app that makes me think I'm just in one place and it does these fake windows and I'd be a happy camper and mm -hmm. they have stuff like that, but it eats up resources, but that's not here nor there. So we'll get back yeah. to the important stuff. Yeah. And then I think yeah. the other, the other call out is also thinking about how are we equipping you all with the more advanced set of tools to be making that move to advisory that we've talked a lot about forever. And when I walked, came into this role, I was like, advisory, what does this word even mean? I still kind of have that tension, just like you, Linda. Like, I know you like the word partner. Others use the word coach. Mm -hmm. The way that I've started thinking about it in all of my conversations with you all is there's three tracks. There's the financial part of advice. There's operational advice of what to actually go do, what levers to pull on to make those changes, right? And then the third is technology. And so are you all in the place to be recommending the right set of applications, whether they're Intuit apps or third party, and so really making sure we're thinking as that ecosystem, right? We want to make that move source of truth for your books, source of truth to your business. We need to make sure we're bringing all of you along. So we've got that new advisory training. That is awesome. Them. I mean, that is amazing that there's a lot of training. I, when I usually work with some clients, I'm like, you just need to go in there. And even in our group, our, uh, we have a group that we're teaching people how to do law firm work. And I, if they don't really know, some of them don't really know the bookkeeping side. There's a bookkeeping course, there's a payroll course, and then there's an advisory one. And I, 
even if you haven't, even if you know, I, I still take of these tests because it's kind of, I want to see one was by um, Jeannie Whitehouse. It was really good. I think it was the bookkeeping one. It was really good. And, and I could listen to her all day, but <laughs> it was, it was a really great course. And I highly recommend because some things you kind of forget about and it just brings it back up to the surface and uh, it's wonderful. I'm glad you actually brought that up, Linda, because that's that's one of the things, again, it's so easy for us as users of the product to not recognize the efforts being put in sometimes behind the scenes for this additional training. That's not necessary, right? But these things are being put together. Um, so thank you for that. I, I do want to ask one of the questions I think was great is, um, and, and directly related to what you were talking about is, um, people are asking any specific apps will be added as a collaboration to QuickBooks. Are there any app um, scenarios which you can discuss at this time um, uh, around that area? Yeah, I can't discuss any specific apps at this time, unfortunately. Okay, that's fine. The, what, what I can tell you, though, is we're, we're partnering very closely with both our Intuit developer team and the advanced team. I, th I think all of you hopefully are, mm -hmm. are in the midst of getting access to QuickBooks Advanced as part of your books. Right? That's, yeah, that's being that. rolled out. We're actually, because it's tax time, now that it's getting extended, we're gonna have to think about how we roll you all into that differently. But what we've been doing is everybody that's new that's coming in automatically get advanced for their books, which provides a host of these benefits, Matthew, that you were just talking about. And then at, after tax time, our plan is everybody that's already got an account who's, who's no, now no longer busy with tax, we can migrate you on to give you access. That has some premium app integrations that are very deeply embedded in the workflow. And so we wanna to continue to lean into those opportunities. Again, just thinking end to end, right? It's not just our products, it's how does it work across for businesses to operate themselves successfully. I love the answer. You're right. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody took one more very important thing away from that. In the comments, please let us know. Have you already heard the fact that as accountants, we are now getting the features of QuickBooks Online Advanced inside of our own My Books environment, right? Linda and I recently wrote an article on this. We've done some videos. You guys will start to see some of this stuff pretty soon. Um, but that's really, really cool. So talk about a product improvement. I think this is phenomenal. It's great for us and will actually give us so much opportunity to learn what these features can do to truly share with clients, right? Yeah, and it's just make sure that if you, you have a client that you find that that's gonna save you some time in doing the work, and if it improves their workflow, it's worth it because the difference in price, it's gonna still be worth it because it's taking away manual work and automating it. And automation always improves accuracy. So um, for sure, that is a big improvement. And I think because people didn't have the opportunity to use it, they just didn't know what was in it. So now they're gonna to get to play in it in their own books, which makes it easy to be able to, to have it that way. Um, we had, did we, we had it since you were the QuickBooks Live guy for a while. I think we had a question about QuickBooks Live. Yeah, where is that? Um, it was just. It was from Veronica. <laughs> okay. read it. We, the, and, and thank you for bringing this one up, Linda. It's important. I mean, uh, we there has to be some hard questions through some of this stuff, right? And we understand. Oh, hey, he's the QuickBooks Live guy before. Um, so he can QuickBooks it. Live. <laughs> First thing everybody needs to understand, QuickBooks Live is not going away, guys. And I, I'm going to give my personal opinion, then please tell me your thoughts onto it. When QuickBooks Live was first introduced, I believe it actually just raised the price floor for us in our area, which means whatever the pricing is listed as for QuickBooks Live, there is no reason we should not be able to collect that much or more for the services we provide. But people would like to hear more about what's going on with QuickBooks Live. It's it's definitely impacted our community. Yeah, no, and I, I appreciate the question and, I, and there's a lot that we've been learning in the journey to not just deliver software, but now deliver a service. Um, and I always like to joke, there's a lot of hubris that a company gets to learn when you pivot your business model from one thing to another. And so, Appreciate the question. The um, here, Here's how I, I, I've got a couple of answers on live. I've spent so much time of my life on live. I can spend hours with you all talking about it. The fundamental belief, and I can genuinely say this, is that QuickBooks Live is growing the market for services. 
And, and to your point of a price floor, 100%. QuickBooks Live is not going to be a differentiated offering that you all can provide within the bounds of the way, Linda, you provide a very focused legal mm -hmm. accounting set of solutions for your clients. QuickBooks Live, right, that it is not that thing. It is going to be a virtual service of bookkeeping designed to provide all, so many of these small businesses that don't understand what an accountant does, mm -hmm. how to understand what good looks like. They, they probably don't even know what bookkeeping actually is. When I went out and did the earliest follow me homes and you asked them, what is an accountant? They literally said it's a person with a green visor, right? Like all kinds of very interesting answers. So, uh, so I think the first answer is I firmly believe it's going to grow the market for services. I think there's a lot we need to do to change and up our game to make it really clear for all of you how and why that's going to work so that you can appropriately differentiate yourselves because it's super scary. And this is something I think Intuit people forget is Intuit is viewed as this big publicly traded company because it is. When you're on the inside and you're looking at amazing values and people that genuinely care about each of you and the small businesses you support, you forget, oh, that, that isn't the perception that is out there in the business. And, and again, I think the way that QuickBooks Live started on its bad, it didn't start on its bad foot. We just fell flat on our face. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> Thank you of, for acknowledging that. Thank totally. you for acknowledging that. I mean, there's no other, there's no other answer than it was a complete miss. And it wasn't because we didn't have a very thoughtful plan to come and bring you along. It's that our internal data systems didn't accurately capture who was connected versus who was not. Yeah. And we pressure tested those in a massive, massive way. And you all kept us very clear when we were not getting that right from a systems perspective. So it's the advertising too, it's in our face as an accountant. If you, I would like it, yeah. I know it's the, the wholesale one and, and that makes a difference. Like a lot of people were clinging to wholesale because they didn't want to have the advertising. But if there was a way that you could make the algorithm see, uh, I have an accountant on this file, the advertising can drop away because it's like, it, it would be like me showing my face inside of your books on QB Live. Like, hey, you know what? Linda does legal accounting. And if you're a lawyer, you come in. That, that's what it felt like. And I think mm -hmm. that that's part of the flop of how it was brought in, but it's still, there's a ton of ads about it. I, I look at it, but I don't find it threatening. And I also find when I, when I started to do my niching and thinking about it, when that started out, uh, you know, I knew that was the startups are gone because they were small clients. And I didn't realize at the time I was like a little heartbroken, but now that I'm in where I place I'm in now, I think everybody just needs to bring themselves to a, that place because they're going to be able to shine even more and get more detailed into if they can pick a niche. It doesn't have to be industry. It can be, there's plenty of other ways to niche, but it's actually more exciting as an accountant. You get to use your brain more. And I think that that's something, and I know Intuit really works hard on trying to get accountants to that that level but yeah it was definitely a, a big flop when it came out and um, I was mad so <laughs> I can tell you that honestly I, I think the challenge is and to be a little bit more direct with part of the question is what where we have a difficulty is we are trying to ensure that this new venture that Intuit is taking on does not devalue the profession in which we live in right Absolutely. and a big part of this is if we're talking, if we started talking before about support and, and the quality of support. Well, I'm sure so many people don't understand the distinction or difference between if we're contacting support and we're not able to get answers we need, what is different about QuickBooks Live and how does that play into place? And I, and I do want to stress real quickly, like Linda and I have friends that actually work within QuickBooks Perfect. Live and they love it. And I think that it's, I actually do believe it's a great opportunity. I think it can be something that's very powerful, powerful for this community, but I don't think we understand how to collaborate and work with it correctly yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we need to figure out that way, but we need to be able to figure it out and we need Intuit to come to us and work with us, not us have to accept what Intuit provides us as a way of collaboration. Yeah, I think. So you just, there's a lot in what you just said uh, that, that I can agree with. And there's some of it, which I can not yet comment, but I'm working on yep. a public statement where I can be very clear on this. So let, let me talk about, uh, there've been a number of points about 
training and quality and the, and the devaluing of the industry completely understand and hear that point, first of all. We are working, um, I'm no longer actively working on it, but the collective we yeah. are actively working on very clear standards of bookkeeping that we have third party, right? People not paid by into it to come review and validate. I think there's an opportunity to expert source that with you all. I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's, that's something that we're exploring right now. Of how could we do that well? Number one, I think number two, the um, big opportunity, as you all know, bookkeeping is an art, not a science today. And so much of the value of the experience you get in bookkeeping is directly contingent on who is doing the classification of that transaction, right? Into what category? And I, I was blown away when I took accounting, I was blown away by the opportunity for um, mistakes or outright intentional fraud at that atomic level of the transaction, right? Literally how you categorize that determines a lot of destiny of how it then shows up on a balance sheet. So there's a lot of trust that it has to be placed in the people that are doing that job. We've learned on QuickBooks Live, okay, here's the set of folks that, here, here's the set of criteria that lead to better bookkeeping outcomes on just the profile of the people that we need to hire, we then memorialize that and then change the hiring practices to get that quality talent. This is the same issue you all face. When I talk with you all, when you're growing your firm, the number one problem you all are facing is how do I find quality talent and how do I quickly assess, are they good or are they not? And can I trust them? Amen. Because fundamentally, professional services and a partnership is about sharing your reputational brand with this new hire. You're only as good as the weakest person in your firm and the checks and balances you put around it so the mistakes don't get manifest to a client or to when they really count, right, in compliance situations. So um, I'm trying to also keep up with the chat. Line. I know. I, I, I love what you said. There's a lot in there. <laughs> I love what you said. And honestly, just real quick, this is a great opportunity to recognize this is exactly why every one of us should become advanced certified. That there is no better reason, like, to just become QuickBooks certified, that is the staple, that's the beginning point. But if you are a true professional and truly believe in your art and what you're doing, you should become advanced certified and demonstrate the fact that you have this higher level of knowledge. If you go in, and I, I challenge everybody here, go do a search on uh, Find a Pro Advisor in your local area and look at how many people are advanced certified versus just certified. You want to stand out, you want to make a difference, get advanced certified. Completely agree. Yeah, great point. Is there anything else on live? I'm, I'm trying to keep up with all of the comments or are, are we good on live? Do we want to transition to the other topics? Uh, let's see I'm here. Um, long time. We've got, so there's a lot of questions. A lot of people are it, the chat is pretty, yeah, pretty so loud. <laughs> I, can, I can speed through maybe a couple of these. One of the questions actually that came through, which is right in line with what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, Mary asked this a while back, which was, how are the support actually being tested for more accounting, bookkeeping, technical backgrounds? And again, before you even answer that, I want to stress the fact that when we're talking about customer support, customer support there is support for UI UX and there's support as an accounting professional or payroll professional, right? Um, but what does Intuit do to, to test their employees to ensure they are able to help answer our questions? Yeah, it, it, so the answer is it varies by the, the team and the group, okay. right? And so for example, there was a question on the QB Live credentials, hey, what do you need to do, right? Like the, we're only hiring QuickBooks Live bookkeepers from those who are pro advisors and certified pro advisors who've been practicing for three years or have an accounting degree. Um, because that level, and I, and I completely agree, the difference between knowing what to do in a product and knowing what and why from an accounting perspective, not the same thing, right? They don't even show up in the same world. They go together, right? Um, and so that's, that's critical. And so the, the training and the, it varies by team. And then I think the, the next level question you're asking, Matthew, of, hey, how do you test that for accountants? I think it's being in dialogue in conversations like this and then pulling those that are raising their hand into, hey, here's, what, here's a test we're going to go do. Can you all join that and give us the input so we get it right? 
I, I love what you just said there. And so I'd like to actually ask a question, which is Linda and I have both been extremely fortunate to be able to collaborate, communicate, and work directly with Intuit. For those who are watching at this time that want to step up and want their voice to be heard, can you help suggest what's the best way they can take a bigger role in this industry by collaborating within the, the system, right? Working with Intuit to help shape the future of accounting by working with you guys. What's the best way? Yeah, so on, um, I'll point to a recent uh, example. Almost in every communication now that we put out, I'm asking that we have a link where each of you can fill out what are your thoughts on this? What's, what's, what's good? What's bad? What are you not liking? So that we're gathering that input. We read every bit of qualitative feedback that comes in whenever we ask in the product, how's this working? What do you think? We also now, um, we just, I believe it just went live. We're recruiting our next uh, round of accountant council members. And so we would love all of you nominate or nominate yourselves <laughs> yeah. to, to come join and make your voice heard and become um, you know, part of that group that's really putting your hand on the tiller and steering the ship. Can I come back? <laughs> oh, Jacob wants to come back too. <laughs> we used to call him the perpetual council person. But yeah, yeah it, was, it was a great experience. I can tell you if you think that you might want to be there, they you get to talk to the developers and tell them what you think. And Intuit does a really good job of taking care of us while we're there. And it's, it's a great experience, both sides. And you get to be with the most amazing people. It's yeah. an amazing crew. I think I kicked off the listening tour by going and meeting with all of our accountant council members, both present and, and, mm -hmm. and prior. And literally that was right when, uh, that was right across both the holidays and then January with the storming of the Capitol right, that happened in the beginning. And I remember I just, I talked with a couple of, of, of you and you were restoring my faith in America as I was having those calls because it was just so evident how you all weren't flustered. You were just like back in it with your clients, you know, making the best happen. Um, it's so powerful. And again, I just, I just, this is why I love you guys, so. It, it's what led to this right now, right? Yeah. Um, I wanted to give a quick bit of feedback from something you said before. I can actually tell you last night, I sent in feedback through QuickBooks. Surprise, surprise about the custom API with quest, custom fields, you know, and mm -hmm. um, yeah. so forth. And immediately re received an email response back from them, like saying, hey, we'd like to talk to you further about this. So I want to stress that fact because I want to make sure that people do understand when you do use that feedback function, they are listening, they are watching it, and they are paying attention. It's super, super, super important. And Kim, um, Kim just posted the link to the accountant council application in the, yeah. I think it's the Zoom chat. So if folks want to hit that, that'd be awesome. Linda, I think you would agree. And we have many members in, in the audience. I'd like to ask you to please uh, pipe up on this as well. Uh, the experience that we've had to be able to work with the team at Intuit, because again, we talk about Intuit sometimes again about this big corporation, but the people that work within this company are amazing people and they truly, truly care about us and They're they passionate. want to do everything they can. They're so passionate about it. It's why we brought Ted on today. So those who have been on the panels have done these different things. If you can please share in a chat um, through Facebook would be great on, on Zoom as well. Just share the positive. And I, tr I strongly suggest anybody apply for yourself, apply, you know, suggest somebody else, whichever it is, it is a value. Um, it, it's definitely worth doing it. I'll pull the link and repost it right now just to be safe. Um, it's okay if I post it in Facebook too, of course, right? Yes. Okay. It's live on our site. I just posted it. I don't know where it went. <laughs> I um, see. So I posted both places as, as trying to be respectful of everybody's time. Our goal again today, thank Ted, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for, or for being honest and open and answering these questions. Uh, we greatly appreciate having a channel to which we can connect with the corporation. And every conversation I've had with you, my gut tells me you are a sincere individual. And I really, really appreciate you bringing you coming on and we'd love to be able to bring you back again in the future. I'm so excited to have been on with you. I'm honored. Thank you for having me. I'd love to come back and continue the conversation, continue learning 
hearing from all of you what's working, what do we need to keep doing, what do we need to stop doing, what aren't we doing that we should be doing. Yes, people are saying they want more roundtables like this, but truly everybody here into it will get all this chat and everything but use the feedback button it, totally. it, it, it people i think people think it's not real it really is real they look through all that they really do like you know you can all write that when you get someone shares an accountant copy uh, an accountant link to you doesn't work you have to go through these leaps and hurdles to make it work you have to go on a private uh window and it's the only way to get in and these are the little things that you guys will work on sometimes you know we we as accountants are like well why can't they just do this but then you realize that like matthew always tells me even if you're moving a button it's a big deal when it's the developer oh. side so you have to really think about it and and know that they, they take it and they read it and they really try to make everybody happy and that's how they get their great ideas too from other people yeah thank you and i just would love to end thank you both for the way that you champion and and role model the, the kind of partnership that we want to be having with the community thank you everybody that joined for the work that you do every day for your small business clients um i honestly can tell you i'm a terrible sleeper but i sleep better because of knowing the actions that you all take every day for your clients it's so powerful and it's a privilege to get to make your lives easier so you can do more of that impact because that is the heart of what powers our economy and it's what makes me proud to be in this role so thank you that is an amazing like no bullshit that is an amazing answer thank you so much i mean truly thank you thank you thank you uh, what is the best way for everybody to stay connected to you i know i've got a slide and we can pull that up but social media what's the best way to stay connected to you and again, everybody, please post into the comments. Yes, you want him to come back. I need you guys all to tell him, come back, come back soon so we can motivate him to get it, come back here quicker and we can keep doing this stuff. But how do they stay connected with you? They email yeah. Matthew Fulton. That's okay. what I really <laughs> uh, Love that. Love that. I would say so. Thanks, thanks to um, people like Kim Ensbaugh. They're helping me improve my social media. Program. Oh, Kim's awesome. Right now, too be on Twitter I've turned that around so underscore Ted Callahan is how you can find me at Twitter and on Instagram now and um and then I would say like I said you know just d don't be afraid to be in touch because we want to learn thank you awesome. so much for taking the time oh, in LinkedIn here. sorry the, that was like there's one yeah, LinkedIn yeah <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for being here. Um, we really do appreciate it. Everybody here appreciates hearing from you. And I think that's a big part of uh, your listening tour. It's a big, bigger uh, group of people. And I think it's great that you took the time to stay with us. Uh, thank you. Thank you all for sharing your thoughts too. Then to conclude, as always, is wishing you all a very successful week. Thank you for your time. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Great to see you all.